everybody, welcome to a, the February 4th broadcast of February 2021. Today we have Arno Garan. He is, uh, our guest is going to be speaking about how loving yourself is the best way to love others. Arno has a very interesting story. Let me give you a little background on him. He was raised by two deaf crack addicts and lived a life of poverty, hunger, and depression for many years. He was left for dead at the age of 22. But being the man of resilience that he is, he managed to turn all that around and reinvent himself, and he's now living the fabulous life in Southern California. Arno is the creator of the Seven Steps to Reprogramming Yourself, a method which has proven to permanently release old emotions and trauma and reruns of negative thinking, like to call it like negative thinking movies. His platform, Total Health Ministry University, has changed the lives of thousands of people from all over the world. And he's here today with us to discuss self-love and how important it is to have it before you can even think about loving somebody else. So Arno, thank you for very much for coming to the show. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here. It's good to see you finally. We've been back and forth, everybody. So, you know, I feel like I already know him. So it's like... <laughs> So that, I don't know, you know, first of all, I have to tell you that, you know, I mean, it's unfortunate, you know, the time that I grew up in, your story of having crack addict parents is one that I've heard a lot that's even been, you know, in my own family. How in the world, what was in you that made you get over all of that to become the man that you are today? There's so many people just give up. They just don't do anything. And you took it and you ran with it. Well, I just never believed that my life had to be that way forever. I knew as a, as a young child that someday I would be an adult and that I would be able to make my life the way I wanted it to be. And I never swayed from that thinking my entire childhood. And I, I tried tirelessly to help my parents stop doing drugs. And it took until I was 18 to finally achieve that goal. And then I had to start figuring out how to rebuild myself, which is what put me on this path. Wow, that is amazing. I just, you know, I was just so impressed with that resilience because it's not something that uh, we see a lot of. You know, people tend to just let that, that early life history break them in some way. So I'm very glad that you're here to talk with us about that. So um, do you think from your work, would you agree with this statement that there is an epidemic of low self-esteem in this country? Absolutely. You know, I've trained thousands and thousands of people to work on their mind and their body. And that is definitely a huge problem that I see all the time. It's really common. We have a belief in America that thinking good things about yourself is bad. It stems from the idea that you shouldn't say good things about yourself. Otherwise, you're bragging, which is actually an unhealthy belief in and of itself. And it's gone to the point where people won't even think good things about themselves. But I learned as a martial artist that as a warrior, it's no one else's job to make me feel good. It's my job to make myself feel good. It's my responsibility. And so I began to learn how to do that at a young age. And I wish everyone could learn how to make themselves feel good because if everyone did that, we'd all be a lot happier. Like Jim Rohn said, take care of you for me. Oh, that's a nice phrase. So tell me what you know, from all your experiences in your work in this field, what does the term self-love mean to you? How would you define it? You know, if you think about a human being being like a plant, if you walk by a plant and sneer at it and then don't give it any water and don't give it any food because plants need food too and don't give it any light, it'll shrink and it'll start to wither and it'll die. But if you talk to the plant, play classical music for the plant that's actually proven. If you give it fertilizer and express a feeling of love towards your plants, those plants will grow and flourish. And we need to do that same care and nurturing to ourselves. And a lot of times what really helps people is to just make a decision to start taking good care of themselves mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically, and think about nurturing themselves into the strongest person they can be. How would someone figure that out, though? How do you do that? Well, actually, How do you nurture yourself if you've never, that's never been demonstrated to you 
in your life. You've been a child that grew up without that kind of support system. You don't, you've never seen it. How do you figure that out? You get training, read books, go to courses, and I can give you some training exercises right now that I think are very powerful. I'm all ears. Okay. Well, one of the best ones that I, I learned uh, when I first started training martial arts, and I also learned it in college in a cl class called interpersonal communication. So I kind of learned them both in the same year when I was a junior in high school, because I went to college early. But uh, the exercise is every morning you get up and you look in the mirror and you say nice things to yourself about yourself and you begin to practice the art of speaking kindly to yourself and if it makes you cry if you find it really hard to do it means you really need to do it now this is working on your your conscious mind right and the unconscious mind is something totally different that's all your old programs from the past and getting rid of those is a different conversation but we have to consciously love ourselves and that's one way to begin is just look in the mirror and say nice things to yourself every day. My martial arts master said, if you don't feel better within a month, come talk to me. And the instructor in that course I took said, don't leave your home until you've made yourself feel good. Oh, that's a very, very nice tactic. I like that. So how important is it, would you say, for people to know themselves before they start on this journey of, of trying to love themselves? Is that work that you, can, you should do before or can it be done after? What do you mean by know yourself? Well, it's like some people, like, how do you know what you need? How do you know what kind of things that you're capable of in spite of what you've been exposed to? Mm. Do you mean like what your talents and, and natural abilities are? Well, how far can you go? Mm. Well, I think that it, it actually begins with you believing in your unlimited potential or right? you have to believe in yourself and then you start to find out what skills and talents and abilities you're born with or have developed because you can become good at anything you want there's no limit to what you can do but if you don't believe that then then you are limited all the limitations are inside of us and so we just have to let that go and realize hey we're a human being that means no limitations we can think about something and then bring it into our life. It's called visualization. And there's no reason to wait to discover what your talents and goals are to start loving yourself. You need to start loving yourself right now so you can bring forward all the fruits of those, the hard work you're going to be doing on yourself to become the person you dream you could become. It's training. Okay. You become who you want to be through training. So train yourself to love yourself. That exercise I gave you is just one. There's so many other things that I can show you to help you love yourself better so that you can then be a better person and therefore do more, help more, be a great leader in your community. I see. Okay. That's what I was getting at trying to see, okay, where does that fit in? Because obviously it has to, someone has to start somewhere. So I was trying to get, get an idea of where, the, where, the, where you, the road starts. So what mm -hmm. are, you know, as you've been doing your work all these years, uh, what would you say are some of the most common patterns that people, uh, that you have observed in people that are having unhappy relationships with others? Ah, okay. That's a great question. The number one rule of relationships is no one can make you feel anything. And my brother was saying he might want to write a book about that because it's so common to find that people don't take responsibility for what they feel. They blame their partner, their parents, their kids, their friend, their neighbor, the government for how they feel. But no one can actually make you feel everything or anything, excuse me. Every thought you think creates emotion in your body literally creates it in your brain and goes in your body. So those feelings you have are yours. They don't belong to anyone else. And if you don't take responsibility for them, you're just a victim and someone can just come up to you and push your buttons and trigger all these emotions. And then you blame them when it's you who have the buttons to begin with. And so the, the biggest key to having healthy, happy, fantastic, oh my God relationships is to start with realizing no one makes you feel anything. And if you can take responsibility for your feelings, then you can take the next step, which is to learn how to erase the ones you don't like. Because no matter what you do, if you don't erase the ones inside of you that are embedded, you're going to attract to you people that match those relationship patterns. And then you're just going to keep replaying those patterns forever until you get rid of them. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I like that. 
Well, tell me this, you know, as we look at, obviously people need to grow and change. They seem to resist that though. There's a lot of resistance to growing and changing. Why are so many people afraid of change? They would rather stay in some rut, some ridiculous relationship where they're being abused or abandoned and neglected and heard and lied to than leave that behind and try something new. What is it that is going on that keeps people so tied to painful relationships and painful situations? That is a great question because I'm sure a lot of those people themselves don't even know why. They feel like they're trapped or stuck in the pattern. And that's really what's going on is the unconscious mind is much stronger than the conscious mind. So even if you think to yourself, I need to make a change, I need to do something different, you find yourself still stuck in the same place because your unconscious programming has locked you into it. It's the same with people who don't exercise. They go to the gym at the beginning of January, sign up for a membership. (laughs) And then two weeks later, they don't go anymore because the unconscious mind is programmed not to do that. So in order for them to break out of that horrible pattern of being stuck in that abusive relationship, they've got to erase the unconscious parts of them, like the pain and the fear and the anger and all that crap that they feel inside. So they no longer vibrate or resonate with or feel comfortable in that environment anymore. If you don't have all those emotions, it's not comfortable anymore. It's only comfortable because it matches all that pain inside of you. Then you'll find yourself in a different place and it happens more automatically than forcefully. But I gotta say, if someone is hurting you, whether it's verbally or physically, you need to leave immediately and then start working on all that stuff so you don't recreate that experience in your next relationship. So many women I have found, though, Arno, don't recognize what's because of what's happened to them when they were growing up. They don't recognize that this language this person is using towards you is verbal abuse. The way this person sneers and discounts you is emotional abuse. The, they, don't rec, they don't see that. Is there, are there any tips you can get, give them for, you know, getting inside to what they're feeling and, and, and kind of ferreting out? parenting that out? Yes, it begins with how you talk to yourself. So make a decision right now, never to say or think anything mean to yourself about yourself ever again. Mm. Just decide right now, you're never going to think or say anything mean to yourself about yourself ever again. And when you stop doing that, you'll find that you'll be nice to the people closest to you also, even if you didn't mean to be mean to your kid or your pet or your best friend or your spouse, once you stop being mean to yourself, you'll stop being mean to those closest to you. And then you'll begin to see that when someone's being mean to you, that that doesn't fit. That's not right. So there comes a second decision. Decide that no one has, no one is ever allowed to speak unkindly to you ever. That fighting is not a part of life or healthy relationships or anything you want to be a part of. You deserve to have peace and to be treated kindly. You treat everyone with respect. Everyone treats you with respect. Why is that so hard? It's easy, but you have to decide that those are the rules and there's nothing else that's acceptable. To decide means to cut off all other possibilities. There is no uh, possibility of someone being mean to you. If they are, you tell them, if you ever say a mean thing to me again, it's over. And if they do it again, you leave. You pack up your stuff and leave or you kick them out. And that's the end. That's it. Relationship over. And there's plenty of other people out there in the world that will be happy to agree to have that kind of relationship with you. In fact, they might be looking for you right now. Yeah, but they can't find you because you're tied up with this idiot. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, tell me this. Do you think, because this is like, I want to get your thoughts on this because it's something I've pondered. It just seems like most people are more afraid of success than they are of failure. Well, most of that fear is unconscious, whether it's fear of success or fear of failure. People are afraid to be successful for all kinds of reasons, but even if they decide in their conscious mind that it's good for them to be successful, they're still going to have those fears stuck in their body, which really means their unconscious mind, because your unconscious mind is actually in the whole body that you are inside of. All the cells of your body contain the old emotions and thoughts from the past that are programmed into you. So if you have a fear inside of you, 
along the lines of if I ever become successful, then all my friends will leave. Or if I ever become successful, then people will attack me or anything like that stuck inside of you. Then you might consciously say, yes, I want to be successful. But then you find yourself sabotaging the progress. You find yourself Mm -hmm. In situations where you're saying, but this isn't what I wanted. I wanted to be successful. Why is this happening to me? You might even find yourself paralyzed by fear and not know why it's there. And once we can remove those unconscious programs, then we can find ourselves moving forward. I see. Okay. That makes total sense. I can give you an example. So my mom used to tell me all the time as a kid that if you ever become rich, you'll become evil and you'll never be able to stop it or control it. That'll be it. You'll become an evil person. You'll be that way forever after. (laughs) Yeah. She told me this all the time, right? So I was very unconsciously programmed to be afraid of success, but I didn't know that. I forgot all about that. And in my early twenties, I was working on um, becoming more successful in my life financially. And I was taking a basket of clothes to the laundry and I noticed this feeling go through my body like a lightning bolt, just fear. And I thought, what is that? So I I replayed the thoughts in my head and I got to the thought and it was my mom's voice saying, if you ever become rich, you're going to become evil and you won't be able to control it. And I was like, ah, and that And that was her program that she put into me as a kid that we could say it's a fear of success. So then I had to use the seven steps through programming yourself after I invented it, because I didn't know what to do at that point. But a few years later, I invented it. And I was able to erase that feeling of fear. So the thought of getting rich didn't trigger that fear anymore. Well, let's talk about this. What would you say are the three most important steps to having what you call an amazing relationship with yourself? With yourself? Mm Mm-hmm. That is a really, really good one. Okay, so first of all, the number one rule in relationships we mentioned before is to be responsible for all of your feelings. So if you're going to be in a good relationship with yourself, which means loving yourself, happy with yourself, enjoy hanging out with yourself, you know, you don't ever have to be bored if you like hanging out with yourself. Well, in order to have that, you've got to be responsible for how you feel about yourself. So that's number one. And then, of course, you can do things to build up how you feel about yourself and feel better about yourself. But removing the negative feelings of the past is going to be super important in that. Right. Number two is to love yourself without condition, which means to remove all of the judgment that you feel about yourself. And ironically, any judgment you have about yourself, you also have about other people. And any judgment you find that you have about other people, you have about yourself, too. And as you remove the judgment, you'll begin to feel more safe with yourself. You'll begin to notice that if you look in the mirror, you're not criticizing everything that's wrong with your body as much as you used to, because you've been erasing all those feelings of judgment about your body. When you look in the mirror, you don't feel as bad about how you look or your age or how you dress or how much money you have, because you've been erasing those feelings of judgment about those things. And you started to feel like, I'm good, I'm okay, just the way that I am. And then the third thing is really to create a a habit of building your self-esteem every day. You can use the exercise I gave you before and use I am statements. And I'm gonna add a little bit to that. Pick two or three I am statements that you feel really describes who you want to be. Maybe you wanna be confident and strong, or maybe you wanna be romantic and beautiful. Maybe you wanna be angelic and divine. Who do you want to be, right? You get to say, so pick two or three I am statements and say them every single morning. And if you do the same ones every single day, they'll start to get ingrained into your unconscious mind. If you do it when you first wake up or right before you go to bed or both, it'll start planting them like flowers into the unconscious mind. If you do it in the middle of the day, they won't do that. It has to be when you first wake up or before you go to bed, to get it into the unconscious. And what you're gonna start to notice is when you are not being that way, when you're gonna see the contrast. And over time, especially if you know how to erase the things that are not you being who you say you are, you'll find that you become automatically that person all the time. People will reflect it back to you. You know, I chose to be unconditional love for years and people started saying to me, you know, I've never taken a seminar where I felt like I could just take the information and go do whatever I wanted. And I wasn't going to be judged if I didn't follow all those steps. And 
people would say things like, I've never felt so safe before. And that was a reflection of me working on becoming that every day for years. Uh And then you can pick something else after a while if you become so naturally that person. Well, I wanted to talk about, you know, your, you have a, a free course and listeners, we will be giving you some information about how you can register for that uh, a little bit later. So why are your relation, why your relationships are the way that they are? What can you just give us some highlights about what you teach about self-love to the people that participate in that program? Yes. Why your relationships are the way they are. Don't you want to know why they keep repeating the same patterns or why you're with the, the kind of people you're with, that's what you're going to find out in that course. It's, it's actually an, an exercise driven workshop. It's not me lecturing for an hour and a half. It's actually you, and there's a workbook that comes with it, going through many different exercises. And as you go through the steps, you begin to see for yourself what's really causing the repeating patterns in your relationships, why you keep attracting the same person, but they all have a different name. And you see like, oh, that's, that's where it's actually originating. And, and when you start to see that, it changes your, your view of yourself from a victim, if you have it consciously or not, to a powerful creator. You begin to realize you've been unconsciously and accidentally creating these patterns. And seeing where they come from is like a, a wake-up call for most people. And it's very wow. life, life-changing. It's, it's life-pivoting. It's all of a sudden you're on one track, now you've jumped to another one where you actually have the power to change. Because if you, if you can't see where they come from, how can you change them? Right. And then you can start to make those changes. It's a very powerful workshop in that regard, because even if you already know that you're creating your patterns, seeing what they are and where they come from is going to make a huge difference for you. Yeah, I think that's uh, very mind blowing and uh, it's going to require a lot of people to be really honest. Well, no one's going to read their workbook. I'm not going to come to your house and look at it. So I am. (laughs) That I would want to, but I won't. So talk, <laughs> tell us a little bit, give us a say three to five tips for people who are listening to this interview today for how they can go out and make some improvements to their life, like starting like right now. Well, there's a lot of things you can do to make your life better. The first thing to do is to educate yourself. That's always the biggest secret to being more successful or happier in life. The biggest difference between someone who's happy in their relationships and someone who isn't is that the person who's happy in their relationships typically has been through training, whether it was their parents who trained them or they went and paid people to train them to learn how to be good at relationships. We're not born knowing how to be good at relationships. We learn how. And so if you want to be good at anything at all, start getting an education in that specific arena. If you want to be good at money, learn about money. If you want to learn, if you want to be a good teacher, learn how to be a good teacher. The mistake a lot of people make is they just start jumping into things without learning how to do it. And that's why there's a a lot of successful people who make habits of reading a book every week or even every day and taking courses regularly, because the more that you can fill your mind with knowledge that's useful, the better decisions you're going to make and the better your life is going to become. And there's lots of evidence that economies of a a whole country or the income of, of a certain group of people is very much determined on how educated they are. So that's number one is make a, make a commitment to keep educating yourself, however you want to do it. Okay. Uh, Right. Another thing you can do to make your life better is to take time every day to breathe and quiet down your mind. However you want to quiet down your mind. Some people, they like to meditate. That's fine. But you need to take some time every day to quiet your mind. Even if you just sit and focus on breathing and count to a hundred. Right. If you just focus on quieting your mind every single day, my old martial arts master said, if you can't do it for an hour, do it for a half hour. If you can't do it for a half hour, do it for 15 minutes. If you can't do it for 15 minutes, well, one minute is better than nothing. Mm. And you'll find that some of the most successful people in the world attribute their success to taking time to quiet their mind every day. It's something that Oprah has been teaching. There was a Huffington Post article about it where they had a long list of very successful people from many different fields. Um, The CEO of Ford Motors, of course, the editor-in-chief of Huffington Post. Um, What's that guy that started Def Comedy Jam? Russell Simmons. 
right? All these uh, amazing people has said their number one secret of success was learning how to quiet their mind and do it every single day. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, if you ever have studied success through the, the world of personal development, you might find out that one of the biggest secrets of success that isn't always talked about is how you eat. And if you can eat a diet that's higher in organic raw vegetables, you're going to do better. In fact, Tony Robbins said in his program that his number one secret of success in life is to eat at least 70% organic raw fruits and vegetables. And that that is the secret of being successful. Number one. That's <laughs> like super people, nutrition. Mm -hmm, very much so. And look, if, if you think it's for wimps, just think about this. The guy that's going to be playing uh, well, uh, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers next year, who played this year as quarterback, Tom Brady, who many people think is the greatest quarterback in football history. I don't know th about that, but he's definitely one of the best. He said in his book, TB12, the reason I went from being an, uh, a mediocre player to an elite player, not even mentioning the fact that he's playing well into his 40s, is because I stopped eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and hot dogs and started eating at least an 80% organic vegetable diet. Wow. So that's a really, really big secret to being a great athlete. But if Tony Robbins said this is the secret of being successful, what's really going on there is if you wake up tired and lethargic and you have health challenges, how are you going to have the energy to go kick butt in life and, and do what you want to do? And it's also proven that you feel happier when you eat better. And I'm not saying you should, you should be a perfect eater. I'm saying consider making a change in that direction. Even if you just swap out one meal a day, you'll notice you feel better. And that's easy enough to do. And once you start learning about how to eat healthy, because it does take an education, you might find that it's a really, really big positive change for you. Not to mention, nobody wants to get sick when they're in, the, in their later years. Right. And you stay active and you stay healthy and don't have to take prescription drugs and you can move around. You don't need to be in a wheelchair and all kinds of wonderful things happen. And I think for women, it's important too, because you know, we are the bringers of life. So if your healthy body will help you have healthy children. I wanted to also Absolutely. ask and you, um, yeah. right. I want to ask you okay. um, to talk about your courses. Okay. Because we are going to, we worked out this great deal where we're going to give a great discount for a limited time. So, so don't wait. Uh, on some of, on one of his courses about finding your soulmate, but he also has some other things on his site. So I'd like you to talk about those offerings. Okay, perfect. Well, you know, I gave you three things you can do to change your life right now, but actually the best thing you can do is to learn how to erase the unconscious programs that get in the way of you being happy and successful in your life. And you can learn that from taking my three-day course, the seven steps to reprogramming yourself. If I could go back in time and teach myself anything as a kid, that's what I would teach myself. Because no matter how much you know about how to do something, like how to trade stocks or how to play football or whatever it is you love to do, how to write books or how to garden, no matter how much you know about a specific skill or arena, if you don't remove the unconscious blockages inside of you, you might find that you cannot get out of that pattern and therefore achieve your success. But if you look at it from a more evolutionary or human point of view, if you don't erase your old programs, you're never going to become the person you've always known you could become. It's like being stuck and you can get unstuck as you move through those unconscious walls and blockages, remove those buttons that people can push on you. The beautiful thing is that it also removes it for people around you, especially if you have kids. And if you haven't had kids yet and you remove a lot of this old stuff, they won't inherit it from you which they do, if you, if you don't do the work, your kids will inherit it all from you. All the same baggage you have, they're gonna get the same stuff when they're born. So working through that, to me, is the number one secret of success in life. That's really our flagship course. It's a 12 hour online training, which means anyone can watch the whole thing right now and literally learn how to start erasing their negative emotions from the past. And I'm talking about any subject. If you have anxiety issues, if you have PTSD, if you're depressed, if you're sad, if you have rage issues, if you have anger issues, if you just procrastinate and you don't know why, it can work on any and all of those types of issues. But if all you wanna do is achieve a goal, I can tell you right now, if you don't learn how to do the seven steps, you may not achieve the goal because there might be a part of you that's self-sabotaging that you don't even know right. is there. 
and yeah. you don't even see it. Right. Yeah. Now I have 29 courses. That's the first one. But once you take that one, then you can continue down the money path, the relationship path, the health path, or more into personal development. I have a lot of courses and advanced spiritual training. It depends on what you're interested in, but everyone needs to know how to erase or delete their past programming. I agree. I think there's a big stumbling block to, to uh, this whole month programming. It's like women are coming because they want to learn how to love themselves and, and get past those kinds of hurdles and things that have been holding them back, erase those old tapes, break those old chains that are attaching them to unhealthy relationships and unhealthy people. So I think this would be a great tool for them to have in their arsenal to stay, you know, head in that direction. Absolutely. I mean, I can tell you so many, many, many stories of women who've taken my program and found that their relationships and the relationship to themselves changed. One that came to mind first is an elementary school teacher from Apple Valley, California named Deborah Kearns. And Deborah was very, very angry after um, going through a terrible divorce. And she said for eight years, she tried everything on the planet that she could find to get rid of her anger. And she was so angry that when she walked into a room, the room would clear out without her even saying a word because her anger was just so huge. People could feel it and they would just leave. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she would wake up angry every single morning and she didn't know what to do. She went to therapy. I mean, she tried everything that you could name. She said she even went to Peru to take ayahuasca to try to get rid of this anger. And after eight years, she was still furious. Of course, she couldn't move on and get a new boyfriend or anything like that. And it wasn't good for her kids that she was right. supposed to be co-parenting with. And, you know, she came to my seminar and told everyone that after learning the seven steps through programming herself, it took a little while, you know, a couple months, but she worked on all the anger until she woke up and she wasn't angry anymore. And she was able to actually put her old wedding ring on and it still didn't invite any anger to come to the surface. There was just nothing there. It was actually gone forever. And has Wow. Not yeah. Yeah, and that's what's available uh, through this training. That's very excellent. Well, Arno, I want to thank you for coming and talking about all of this. And uh, like we said, we'll have uh, some links in the show description for you to click and get discounts on some of the programs that Arno is offering to you from uh, the February discount. That's what we're going to call it. So I thanks, guy. This was great. Yeah, I was glad, happy we finally caught up with each other and, and got this show done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And hopefully we'll change a lot of people's lives. Yeah. I hope so. That's the goal. Thanks, Arno. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you, too. Bye-bye.